Good evening, America. It's that time of year again, the NFL Draft. And as always, I'm here to give you my expert analysis and insight on the picks and trades that will shape the future of the league. Now, I know some of you may be wondering why you should listen to me when it comes to football. Well, let me tell you, my friends, I know a thing or two about the game. In fact, my knowledge of football is so extensive, I could probably go toe-to-toe with Bill Belichick and come out on top. Let us also not forget that I was once going to take my talents to Alabama and unseat Derrick Henry. However, I opted to stay at Harvard and get my law degree. So I guess you're welcome, Derrick Henry, for having a potential Hall of Fame career. But enough about me. Let's talk about the draft. This year's first round was full of surprises, like the time I found out that Top Gun wasn't actually a documentary. Buckle up, folks, because it's time to dive into the world of football with me. The one and only Ben Shapiro, the man whose football intellect is sharper than a brand new set of Jeremy's Razors. Visit jeremysrazors.com for more details. So what did we see in the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft? Well, let's just say that some teams knocked it out of the park. While others may have left their fans feeling more disappointed than someone who thought Game of Thrones was going to have a good ending. I am looking directly at you, Green Bay. However, as a massive Detroit Lions fan, it brings me massive amounts of joy to see your franchise falling apart bit by bit. Your franchise is so god-awful that even your MVP quarterback didn't want to stick around anymore. But in all seriousness, this year's draft is shaping up to be one of the most unpredictable in recent memory. Some teams are set to make franchise-altering picks, while others are looking to make a splash with trades and maneuvers that could change the landscape of the entire league. And you know what that means? It's time for me to put on my thinking cap and break down every pick and trade, like Ben Johnson breaking down an opposing defense. Seriously, what an absolute top G Ben Johnson is. So if you want to know which teams made the best moves, then stay tuned because this is the show for you. I'll be breaking down every pick and trade from the first round. And trust me, it's going to be more exciting than watching Joe Biden try and walk up a flight of stairs or hold a coherent thought or run a country. Before we dive into the important issues of the day, I want to take a moment to talk about one of my favorite channels on YouTube, Hat and Beard. Here's the thing. Um, Hat and Beard needs your support. He puts in a lot of mid-tier work to produce the barely watchable quality content that you all love, and he deserves to be recognized for it. So here's what I'm asking you to do. If you're a fan of Hat and Beard, if you enjoy his content and appreciate the half-assed effort he puts into every video, then please like and subscribe to his channel. It's a small gesture, but it can make a big difference in helping them grow and continue to produce the kind of content that we all enjoy. Also, I have heard from others, and myself can confirm that by doing so, okay, your Ben Johnson will grow three, six inches longer, you'll be able to run faster and jump higher. Yes, just like the PF Flyers, you will finally be able to have that world-renowned Ben Johnson you've finally been after. And if you're not already a fan of Hat and Beard, then trust me, you and your wife are missing out. So go ahead and give them a try. Like and subscribe to their channel and see for yourself why I and my wife who is a medical doctor, are such big fans. Let's show our support for the barely functioning creator. Like and subscribe today, and let's help him continue to produce the kind of content that we all tolerate. Now back to the NFL Draft. Breaking down the first round of the NFL Draft, we've seen some surprising picks, some bold trades, and some head-scratching decisions that have left fans and analysts alike wondering what the future holds. Even I couldn't have predicted some of the moves that were made And some of the spots players fell too. But that's the beauty of the draft. It's a time of excitement and uncertainty where anything can happen and every pick has the potential to change the course of a franchise's future. And for some teams, like my Detroit Lions in our future, we don't need roads. When you've got Brad Holmes calling the shots, like Allstate, you're in good hands. So stay tuned, because we've got a lot more to cover. The first overall pick in the draft, Carolina Panthers, Bryce Young. Carolina moved up to the number one overall and secured their potential franchise quarterback giving up on DJ Moore and his career. Despite concerns about his size, Young was the top QB on the PFF big board, and his 92.9 passing grade led all players at the position over the past two seasons. Now, let me tell you, as myself being viewed as shorter than average, when in reality you're six foot eight. however, no one wants to admit it, it can be annoying to hear over and over again. The best thing for Bryce Young to do here is show up and grind away. The QB job is going to be his to lose. I'll give this an A grade, Great player, but not the top talent in this year's draft. Second overall pick, Houston Texans, C.J. Stroud. 
After a lot of smoke that they would pass on a signal caller, the Texans ultimately select the second-ranked quarterback on most people's big board. I will give a single-letter grade for this pick, as I've heard that C.J. Stroud struggles with reading. B+. It fills a need, but Stroud is far from the second-best player in the draft. I've never been overly impressed with his skills. And until an Ohio State quarterback proves me otherwise, I will continue to not have faith in them. Third overall, pick Houston Texans, Will Anderson Jr., The Texans shocked everyone and moved up to the number three pick to select the top edge defender and best overall prospect in the draft. Anderson produced a 207 total pressures in three years at Alabama. Houston lands a top player, but they pay a steep price. However, when you've got the capital to be bold, it can pay off immensely or blow up in their face. Getting two of the top ranked players back to back could now be the linchpin that holds Demeco Ryan's coaching career together. I'll give his an A plus grade, best player in the draft far and away but he priced to get him was a big one. Fourth overall, Indianapolis Colts, Anthony Richardson. The Colts stayed at the number four spot and took a big swing on Anthony Richardson's high ceiling. While he was inconsistent as a passer, he is arguably the most incredible athlete at the quarterback position we have ever seen, as he forced 39 missed tackles in 2022. Most people thought that Will Levis, who has poop on his upper lip, was the locked-in pick for Indy. But the Colts apparently were all bricked up after watching the Combine in Lucas Oil Stadium and had to get their hands on AR-15. Look, would I have taken that shot there? No. Can you blame the Colts for making that pick? No. They need a young franchise QB. Maybe Richardson sits for a year, maybe a year and a half, with his talent having all the ceiling in the world. And the Colts having that fifth-year options. This could be the solution to their QB problems. I have to be realistic in my grade here. B+. Too high of a pick for a gamble on a player, in my opinion. Fifth overall, pick Seattle Seabags, Devin Witherspoon. The Seahawks surprised everyone when they took Witherspoon number five overall. The Illinois product was the Power Five's highest graded cornerback last season. In press coverage for 107 snaps, he allowed just one yard in coverage on those plays. Top tier talent, incredibly high ceiling player. Honestly, if he would have fell to the Lions at six, I could see them taking him there. Witherspoon wasn't getting out of the top ten. Seattle is building up another Legion of Boom, and adding Witherspoon instantly makes the Seattle a top 15 defense right out of the box. No DLC required here. Look for Seattle to win the NFC West this year. I'm going to have to give this an overall grade of A. Top tier talent taken in the top five. Hard to argue with that. Sixth overall pick, Arizona Cardinals, Paris Johnson Jr. After moving down from three, the Cardinals move back up and select their left tackle in Paris. Johnson Jr., he ticks all the boxes physically at 6'6 and 310 pounds, and he allowed just 14 total pressures from 449 pass-blocking snaps last season, the best of his career. The wheeling and dealing by Arizona just makes this that much better. However, as a Lions fan, I can tell you we won this trade. I told you all about a month ago that the smartest thing that the Lions could do would be trade out of the sixth spot and gather as much draft capital as possible. Arizona decided to be our dancing partners on draft night. Paris Johnson is a top-ranked tackle in this draft class, but he is nowhere close to being a top-10 selection. A four-effort here, Arizona B for the player at that spot. Seventh overall, pick Las Vegas Raiders, Tyree Wilson. Wilson looks like he was built in a pass-rushing lab, so it's not a shock to see him go in the top-10. That said, the consistency just wasn't there in college. His 75.1 PFF grade last season was the highest of his career. He's a massive, massive human being and should pair nicely with the Condor Mad Max Crosby. However, a foot injury is concerning, especially at this size and the position that he plays. There was some talk of Wilson going top three, so grabbing a projected top three player at seven is beautiful, just that pre-existing injury could prove to be a setback in the short term. Now, I'm going to have to limit my grade here and give them a solid B, eighth overall pick. Atlanta Falcons, Bijan Robinson. Teams wouldn't usually receive an average grade for taking a running back in the top 10, but it's hard to dislike this pick too much, given how good Bijan Robinson was in 2022. An impressive athlete at 220 pounds, he set a PFF college record with 104 missed tackles forced in 2022, producing a 95.3 PFF grade in the process. He's a hyper-talented running back, trying to show that running backs are not only worthy of a first-round pick in today's NFL, but a top-10 pick. This will be interesting to see how it works out. Will Robinson boom, or will he bust? I am not sure. Let's hope for us football purists that he booms, and we get back to an NFL where a running back is a vital role in the game plan. Love the player, hate the spot. 
Falcons get a B plus for their grade. Ninth overall, Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Carter landing the num two overall player on the PFF big board at pick nine is a huge win for the Eagles. Carter played 392 snaps in 2022 and earned a 92.3 PFF grade that led all Power 5 interior defenders. He registered 32 total pressures from 273 pass rushing snaps. The Eagles had to give up just a 2024 fourth round pick to make this happen. I, however, dislike this pick. He dominated college until some off the field issues seemingly broke Jalen Carter's brain a little bit. Having to leave the combine hurt his stock at small amount at first, but then his lackluster showing at Georgia's Pro Day was telling of his mental toughness. The Eagles might have the steal of the first round if Carter hits. That's a big if, though. Philly gets a grade of B for the pick. Tenth overall pick, Chicago Bears, Darnell Wright. Wright fills a need for the Bears, but he is just the 22 NN-ranked player on the PFF draft board. He produced a PFF grade of just 71.4 in 2022, but has some really good reps on tape where he just overpowers people. He allowed just eight total pressures in 2022. However, he was far from my top talent at tackle. And when you've got someone from your own backyard still available to draft, who is the one or one A ranked tackle in the draft class like Peter Skaronsky, you draft that player. But the Bears are going to Bears. And who am I as a Lions fan to get in their way? Cannot wait to watch Hutch manhandle this chump for the next few years. 11th overall pick Tennessee Titans, Peter Skaronsky. The big question is whether Skaronsky will play tackle or guard at the next level. He played tackle in 2022, though, and had a tremendous season. As Northwestern's starting left tackle this past season, he allowed just six total pressures on 474 pass-blocking snaps. The Titans have to be over the moon with this uh, set this player. Having made it just out of the top 10 and uh, just missing the the career-ending black hole that is Chicago, Tennessee was able to secure a top eight player at 11. I love this player. In this spot, the Titans earn and strong A grade in my book. 12th overall pick, my Detroit Lions. I will not be giving my take here. Instead, you'll need to like and subscribe to the channel to hear Hatton Beard's breakdown of the Lions 2023 draft class. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on it. And like I stated before, and by many, many other firsthand accounts, your Ben Johnson will grow three to six inches longer. 13th overall pick, Green Bay Packers, Lucas Van Ness. Many thought this was the spot to find quarterback Jordan Love, a playmaker, but the Packers instead opted for Van Ness. He uses his power to cave in opposing pass protections and likely comes with the versatility of being able to kick inside at times. Well, folks, the Packers have made their pick, and let's just say it left me scratching my head. I mean, I know they're trying to find talent, but drafting a backup DE in the first round is a bold strategy. The guy is a block of cheese. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love cheese as much as the next guy, but I'm not sure it's a great strategy for building a championship team. Although, I guess if they can't win on the field, at least they'll win the tailgating competition. Let's hope this pick pays off for the Packers. Otherwise, they might be better off drafting a Bratwurst to play offensive line. Grade D+, 14th overall pick, Pittsburgh Steelers, Broderick Jones. The Steelers jump up three spots, giving up a fourth round pick to make sure they land the offensive tackle they wanted. Jones impressed as a pass blocker in 2022, earning an 84.1 PFF pass blocking grade and allowing just nine total pressures from 470 pass blocking snaps. Look, Pittsburgh is in a rare rebuild for their franchise. As Lions fans, securing a strong offensive lineman for the future of your young quarterback is crucial. I love this pick right here. Pittsburgh gets a solid A- minus grade, only downgrade is giving up capital for a player that could probably fall into you. 15th overall, pick. New York Jets, 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 Will McDonald. McDonald had the best season of his college career in 2022 and flashed incredible lateral quickness. PFF's Sam Monson views him as the second best pass rusher in this draft class, but the Iowa State product was just the 29th ranked player on the PFF big board. He finished his college career with 127 total pressures across 862 pass rushing snaps. The Jets continue to build a powerhouse defense through the draft, finally securing Aaron Rodgers and landing Will McDonald in the first round. Should be able to contribute right away, as well as adding depth to an already blooming young defense. Robert Sala has been killing it in the draft the last couple of years, and this pick is no different. Love the player, love the landing spot. The Jets walk away with a strong B-plus grade. They could have possibly traded back and still landed Will McDonald. 16th overall pick, the Washington Commies, Emmanuel Forbes. Look, we don't give Commies the time of day around these here parts, so we won't be entertaining them with an honest grade. Your facility is trash, your team is trash, your city is trash, 
Go back to your Redskins name, you sick Pinkle Kami bastards. Get a very strong D- minus for ruining Emmanuel Forbes' career. 17th overall, pick the New England Patriots, Christian Gonzalez. The Patriots move down to 17th overall, add a fourth round pick, and still land the second best cornerback on the PFF big board. Gonzalez has the size and speed you look for at the position and put together the best season of his career after transferring to Oregon in 2022, racking up four interceptions and six pass breakups. Mm. I'm not impressed with the player behind the face mask, though. Gonzalez seems self-centered. Uh, all eyes on my type player. Sure, Bill Belichick can probably handle him, but why take on that mess? Either way, talented player, the Pats get an A-minus grade for grabbing a top 10 projected player at 17. An 18th overall pick are Detroit Lions. Again, subscribe to Hat and Beard for this. And grow your Ben Johnson, 3 to 6 inches. 19th overall pick, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kalia Kansi. He might be undersized, but Kansi is a phenomenal pass rusher on the interior. His first step is elite, and he's coming off a season where he led all players at the position with a 92.4 PFF pass rushing grade. The Pittsburgh product should make an immediate impact in Tampa Bay. Much like Gerald McCoy before him, Cansey is the second-ranked tackle in the class and lands in Tampa. Look, I like Cansey. I think he's a solid prospect. Tampa didn't have to maneuver to get him, and he landed directly in their laps. Great pick. Great player. Great spot. Tampa gets a grade of a solid A. 20th overall pick. Seattle Seabags. Jackson Smith in Jigba. The Seahawks leave round one with two of the top ten players on the PFF big board. With a 91.7 PFF grade in 2021, JSN now produced 2021 first-round draft picks Chris Olav and Garrett Wilson that year at Ohio State on a per-snap basis. Seattle continues to draft ballers that fall to them, killing it yet again with their second first-round pick. They're able to land a top-10 player at 20. Hats off to you here, Pete Carroll. You're very sneaky-sneaky in the first round. The Seabags get a very, very rare A-plus grade for this selection. 21st overall pick, the Los Angeles Chargers. Quinton Johnston, the Chargers land the third-ranked wide receiver on the PFF big board and a player who can make people miss in space. Johnston forced 19 missed tackles on just 60 receptions and averaged 17.8 yards per catch. He did drop 11.8% of the catchable passes thrown his way this past season, though. Having landed in one of the pass-happiest offenses in the league, Johnston joins an already top-flight wide receiver room. Looking to be the heir apparent to Keenan Allen, Johnston will have a small role at first until either Mike Williams or Keenan Allen gets hurt and will have his chance to shine. I fell in love with Johnston as a prospect and love the fit here for him. Even though Los Angeles is a total bleep hole, this pick is gold. The Chargers walk away with a strong A grade for the pick. 22nd overall pick, Baltimore Ravens, Zay Flowers. Flowers is shifty, knows how to separate, and complements the Ravens' wide receiver room well. He can replace the production they lost from trading Hollywood Brown last year, with Flowers racking up 500 receiving yards on, throws 20-plus yards downfield in 2022. The prospect looks great. However, Lamar Jackson has never supported a true wide receiver one in this career. So best of luck to you at your second team, Zay. Hopefully you can bail on the Ravens after three mildly productive years. Love the player, hate the landing spot, C-plus for the grade. 23rd overall pick Minnesota Vikings, Jordan Addison. The Vikings stick at pick 23 and come away with a talented wide receiver to pair with Justin Jefferson. Addison won the Boletnikoff Award with Pittsburgh in 2021 before transferring to USC, and he finished the past two seasons with 25 touchdowns from 159 receptions. Great, the Vikings get a top-flight wide receiver in the class to go alongside Justin Jefferson, I can't wait for our defense to lock down one of them while the other goes off for 150 yards and two touchdowns. I hate to admit it, but the Vikings got a great player in a great spot. They land. God, I hate this. A minus grade. Only knock on the pick is they're an interdivisional rival. 24th overall pick, the New York Giants, Deontay Banks. The third best cornerback on the PFF big board. Banks can fly and clocked a 4.35 second 40 yard dash at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. An elite athlete, He has proven that he can mirror wide receivers in college and has the size teams look for at the position. He produced a 72.0 PFF grade in his final season at Maryland, the best of his college career. The G-men need help on defense, so why not nab a corner in the first round? Personally, I would have gone after Joey Porter Jr., but the Giants wanted Banks. Strong, solid player, fits their defense nicely. Giants get an A for this pick. I thought that Banks was highly underrated in this year's class of corners, 25th overall pick, the Buffalo Bills, Dalton Kincaid. The Bills make a small jump to land the premier pass-catching tight end in the drafting Kincaid. This is a huge value pick for the 10th overall player on the PFF big board. 
Kincaid was the focal point of the Utah offense and led all players at the position with a 91.8 PFF receiving grade in 2022. However, there is no reason to take a tight end in the first round of the draft. Ever. The Bills really screwed the pooch here on this pick, missing out of a ton of available talent. As a Lions fan, I'm not too mad about it. This pick probably lets Brian Branch fall to us and that my friends is called winning. Good player back pick. The Bills walk home with a big fat D for their grade. 26th overall pick, Dallas Cowboys, Mozzie Smith. It might not be an exciting pick, but for a team that has struggled to stop the run consistently recently, it makes a lot of sense. An impressive athlete for someone his size, Smith posted PFF grades of 75.0 or better in each of the past two seasons. Personally, I was furious when this pick was made. I was hoping that Smith would slide to the Lions at 34. However, the Cowboys had other plans. Smith was the overlooked defensive tackle in this year's class of projected top talent. I'm glad to see him go in the first round as a self-justification, but a real kick to my balls because I wanted him in Detroit so bad. The Cowboys get a sneaky A- grade for this pick. 27th overall pick, Jacksonville Jaguars, Anton Harrison. This makes a lot of sense given the reported suspension for Cam Robinson. Harrison ranked 24th on the PFF big board, so the Jaguars get him at about the right spot, but pick up three additional picks by moving down. He allowed just nine total pressures from 447 pass-blocking snaps in 2022. The perfect spot to nab this player up. I could honestly give a fart less about the Jags, so I won't give this selection to much thought. Solid player, good spot. The Jags get the grade of B-plus for Harrison. 28th overall pick, Cincinnati Bengals, Miles Murphy. Miles Murphy looked like a future top five pick after a freshman season that saw him produce an 85.2 PFF grade, but he didn't progress much beyond that. However, he produced a PFF grade of at least 79.0 in each of the past three seasons and racked up 76 pressures over the past two years. Was Murphy the right pick here? I don't see why not. I personally am not a Bengals fan, and if their goal is to put pressure on Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs, then this is the right pick. Murphy has the tools at his disposal to make life miserable for opposing quarterbacks. I'll give the Bengals the grade of A-. Murphy was at one point projected a top 10 to 15 player on many people's board, so getting him at 28 could be a steal. 29th overall pick. New Orleans Saints, Brian Breesey. A talented player on the defensive interior, Breesey is coming off a season during which he posted a career-high 82.0 PFF pass rushing grade. He can play across multiple spots on the interior and even has experience playing outside the tackles. However, as is the case with most Clemson players, Breezy often looked lost at times and can find himself out of position. Consistently being ranked as the second or third best defensive tackle in this year's class, Breezy has a lot to prove. If he can put it all together with the right toolage, Breezy has all the upside in the world. Being taken this far back in the first round, The Saints aren't rolling the dice too much. The fit should be a good one. The only real shock here is that Mozzie Smith went before him. Again, I will go ahead and pat myself on the back for having Smith higher on my own board than Brissy. But it sucks that he didn't fall to Detroit at the 34th spot. Strong player to take, especially at the 29th spot. The Saints get an A- for me. 30th overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles, Nolan Smith. The Eagles land the 13th overall player on the PFF big board with the 30th pick in the draft. Philadelphia retools its defensive line once again with elite talent by adding Smith, who might be undersized at 238 pounds, but earned a 90.0 PFF run defense grade over the past two seasons and is an incredible athlete. Smith is an outstanding player in the right system. And by he looks of things, Philly is just putting the entire Georgia defense on their team, Good player. The Eagles are greasy. I am not a fan of them currently. So with the uttermost biases, the Eagles get a nice grade of D. I am sick of the Eagles. And frankly, they can have our washed up, busted old trash can with legs when they work. That is DeAndre Swift. But hey, go ahead and load up on injury prone running backs. Also, stop turning yourselves into a living meme and dare to draft anyone from any team other than the Georgia Bulldogs. At this point, I am sure they were livid when the Rams grabbed Stetson Bennett. 31st overall pick, Kansas City Chiefs, Felix Anudike Uzoma. Anudike Uzoma produced PFF grades of 74.0 or better in each of the past two seasons and is one of the best edge benders in this draft class. He was one of the most successful players in college football, at converting pressures into sacks, with 21 of his 89 pressures over the past two seasons resulting in such, um, 
I don't give to shakes of a tail feather about the Chiefs. Honestly, I am willing to bet most of you aren't even still listening at this point, so the Chiefs can get a grade of dildos, or dildos plus because of the kid being from Cana State and being a Chiefs fan. And that, my friends, is the end of our special coverage of the 2023 NFL Draft here on the Ben Shapiro Show. We covered everything from the top picks to the surprises to... Well, mostly just the top picks and the surprises. But before I go, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to our show. That way you'll never miss out on our expert analysis, our insightful interviews, or our occasional Top Gun references. And don't forget, your Ben Johnson will grow three to six inches. Your wife will be so, so happy. Trust me, just like I trust the folks over at Bowl and Branch to grace this elegant tuchus while sleeping. Seven count it. Seven U.S. presidents have slept on their Egyptian cotton sheets, and you should too. Just go to www.bowlandbranch.com forward slash Ben for 20% off your first order. That's www. Ben, it's Donald. What in the flying donkey fuck? I'm watching your show, and I'm hearing this ad read on Hat and Beard's channel. You're doing it again, Ben. For the love of God and all that is holy, how many times do I have to tell you? It's low class and uncalled for. Okay, okay, fine. But Mr. President, you know I never miss a chance to do an ad read and score that sweet, sweet, cold, hard cash. Save it, Ben. You should just hire that hat guy to work for the Daily Wire. Maybe then you'll finally learn how to do things right. Speaking of being right, I have to say it's a bit bittersweet to be proven right about Anthony Richardson. I mean, on the one hand, I knew that he was a top draft pick from the moment I saw him play. And now, here we are. And he's being hailed as one of the best young quarterback prospects in the league. I mean, the Colts have sheep shit for brains, and even they could see the immense talent that I saw. I'm very good at spotting talent. Some might say that I am the best at spotting talent. I don't say it. Other people say it. But on the other hand, it's frustrating to think about how much pushback I got when I first started talking about Richardson. People called me crazy. They called me crazy, said I didn't know what I was talking about. They said he was too inexperienced, too unproven, but I saw something in him that they didn't, much like myself. And much like myself, AR-15 is coming out on top. I saw his athleticism, his arm strength, his ability to read the defense and make quick decisions. And I knew that he had what it took to be a top draft pick. If only people would give him a chance. Just give him a chance, I said. And yet still, the fake news of CNN called me crazy. They called me crazy. That's what they called me. Can you believe that? Just for believing in Anthony. I just wish he could have come to Detroit. Yes, yes, indeed, Mr. President. You were right. AR-15 apparently was worth a top 10 selection. But we both know the Lions weren't going to take him at six. We got our guy in Hendon Hooker in the third, and it's one of the absolute steals of the draft. So it's frustrating to think about all the time and energy I spent trying to convince people that I was right. But at the same time, I take some satisfaction in knowing that I was right all along, that I saw something in Anthony Richardson that others did. And now everyone is seeing it too. They're finally starting to understand what I saw in him at Florida, and they put fully on display at the Combine, where clearly, thanks to my promotion, the Colts got a massive boner, just massive. Some might say dinosaur size, Tyrannosaurus dick, just like the one you'll get when subscribing to Hat and Beard, but you know what they say, better late than never. That's what I tell Melania when I'm taking her to Pound Town. And I'm just happy to see Anthony Richardson succeeding. And to know that I played a small role in helping him get there. Because at the end of the day, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about recognizing talent and giving people the opportunity to shine. And that's what I did with Anthony Richardson. And while you're at it, tell Hat to shave that ridiculous fucking deranged lunatic looking beard. He looks like a goddamn Sam Squanch. The man clearly needs help. He looks like he lives in the mountain eating squirrel bone stew. Nope, I won't hear any more from you. Thank you for your time, sir. We're up against a break. So if you want to stay ahead of the curve, stay informed, and stay entertained, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join our community of free thinkers and truth seekers. Thanks for tuning in, folks. This is Ben Shapiro, signing off. Time to 23 skidoo. Or should I say, 69 skidoo. She said that my pornos were boring.